Good afternoon, everyone. Today is Tuesday, February 6, 2024, and this is the Salina City Council meeting. This meeting is available in Spanish for members of the public in attendance and on Zoom. Translation devices can be obtained in the foyer. Uh, City Clerk. Buenas tardes. Esta reunión está disponible en español para los miembros del público y en Zoom. Las unidades de traducción se pueden obtener en la entrada de la rotonda. Thank you. Uh, Zoom uh, information can be obtained on our city's website. Uh, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Councilmember Rocha, would you lead us? Thank you. Uh, we do have an announcement, uh, consideration item 24-046, the Urban Forest Management Plan has been continued indefinitely. We will go on to public comment. If you wish to make a general public comment or comment on a specific agenda item, you're encouraged to attend the City Council meeting in person or attend the Zoom webinar and use the raise hand icon. Email public comments received have been distributed to the mayor, the council, the city clerk, and will be entered into the per permanent record. Public comments generally are limited to two minutes per speaker. I may further limit the time for public comments depending on the agenda schedule. We are now open for public comment on items that are not on the agenda, but are in the city of Salinas' subject matter jurisdiction. Mayor, yes. before we proceed to public comment, can I do roll call? No. <laughs> Uh, yes, of course. I apologize for skipping that step. Go ahead. Not a problem. We'll proceed with the roll call. Councilmember Barrera? Here. Councilmember Gonzalez? Here. Councilmember McShane? Yeah. Councilmember Osornia? Here. Councilmember Rocha? Here. Councilmember Sandoval? Here. Mayor Craig? Yes, here. Thank you. Thank you, City Clerk Barajas, for keeping me in line. Uh, with that, we'll go on to general public comment. Uh, we're now open for public comment on items that are not on today's agenda. Supervisor Root Askew, welcome. Thank you for having me. Um, as you all know, my name is uh, Wendy Root Askew. I am one of your five, uh, four representatives on the Board of Supervisors who includes a portion of Salinas. Um, I represent a uh, section of South Salinas that mostly overlaps with Council Member McShane. Um, and I just wanted to stop by and say Happy New Year. Um, express my appreciation for the collaborative working relationship that we've each been able to build over the past uh, three years, and especially last year. Um, and I uh, just uh, thank you. And I look, really look forward to uh, what we're going to be able to get done, uh, get done together in the coming year. Um, a couple of the big accomplishments that I want to just highlight um, for you all uh, include the county's commitment to Department of, of Emergency Management investments. Um, highlighting this past weekend, uh, the county has elevated that department to a full department with additional staff so that we're able to respond in partnership with our cities and regional partners to disasters as they seem to be coming at us at a higher uh, rate than we've ever experienced in the past. Um, also in this year, uh, one of the things that I'll be working hard on is ensuring that we fully scale up Medi-Cal um, uh, access. Um, eligibility for Medi-Cal has expanded this year, um, and so we have thousands of residents who are now eligible for health care that have never had access to um, full-scope Medi-Cal in the past. So as your representative on the Central California Alliance for Health, we're working to make sure that that information gets out to every resident who has access, who now has access to Medi-Cal. Um, we've got a lot of projects in the works. The county uh, looks forward to continuing to work in partnership with the city, and I just want you and your residents to know that I'm uh, available and look forward to, um, uh, to, to continuing our, uh, our collaborative and positive working relationship. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Eskew, and thank you for joining us today. Very much appreciate it. All right. Who's up next? <laughs> Uh, hi, my name is Ernesto Hernandez. Uh, I would like to say that uh, the rent is too expensive here in Salinas. So it's del Concilio uh, Distrito 5. Y sí, somos trabajadores del campo y trabajamos temporalmente. So, un momento, por favor, para traducción. Gracias. Oh. Uh, 
Hola, mi nombre es Ernesto Hernández, soy trabajador del campo y este, eh, las rentas aquí en Salinas es, son muy caras. So, los ahorros que nosotros guardamos para esta temporada, pues nos los tenemos que gastar en la renta porque todo está bien caro y pues no, no nos ajusta. So, yo pienso que las rentas aquí en Salinas están demasiado elevadas y pues debería de haber un tipo de ayuda para estos tiempos para no perder uno a su familia aquí o andar pidiendo dinero prestado. Sí, se me hace... Están demasiado caras las rentas aquí en Salina. Especialmente para los trabajadores, pues, de que ahorita los trabajadores del campo estamos trabajando dos, tres días, no es suficiente. Este, apenas si para ir a, comprando comida. Gracias. Hello, my name is Ernesto Hernandez and I'm a field worker here in Salinas and I'm here to say that rents here are very high. Um, we have to save for this season and those savings don't, don't are not enough because we have to spend them in, in rent because rents are really, really high. Uh, we're not able to really make ends meet. Um, we need, I think that we need some type of help so we have a place for our families and we don't have to incur in loans. Um, yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm a field worker. I'm not working full time. I'm just working two or three days a week and that is enough. So um, we have to buy food, pay rent, and rents here are very expensive. Thank you. Hi, welcome. Hello. My name is Olga Reina and I, I am here to talk about rent control. We have been going to the community, talking to the community, and we have seen what he's talking about. The rent is too high, $2,000 for one bedroom. And right now, the, the people that we were talking to have told us that all of their check has gone to the rent and it's barely the 6th of, of February and they're, they're going to leave, live off what, you know? Because there is not enough work right now. They're working like three hours a day right now if they're working and, and they have to borrow to get rent. So I've got, right now we were going out to the stores and places in the community to talk to the people, 75% 100% of the check goes to the rent. So there is no money for, for food left or, or going to the beauty shop or getting their nails done or any, fixing up the car. So the rent has to go down. We have to support rent control. And now, in Salinas, please, thank you. We have 600 signatures right now. Thank you, if you'll give it to the city clerk. Hi, welcome. Hi, I'm Eleanor Elliott, and uh, we are going to be collecting more signatures, too. <laughs> I'm currently very comfortable in a subsidized senior complex. However, it took two years after applying for me to get into that place. And um, I just, last week, I got a phone call saying I was eligible. Another apartment had opened up, and I said, you know, give it to somebody who, you know, somebody else on the list because I'm, I'm, I'm set right now. And uh, I applied for that one four years ago. What I'm saying is, you know, for 70 year olds and 80 year olds, four years to wait for a place to live, for a roof over your head is a death sentence. And, um, I'm one of the lucky ones, but I see so many of my fellow seniors that are living on the streets now, living in their cars, and struggling to get by because they cannot afford rent, and they cannot afford to get the money to get into a place. It's un unacceptable. And, you know, I mean, it's this here in Salinas. Here in Salinas, in this county, in this state, many of us, low income and middle income people are struggling, and especially our seniors, especially my fellow seniors. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, welcome. Hola, buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Maria Caballero. Vivo en el momento para traducción. 
Gracias. Vivo en el Distrito 1 de Salinas y solamente eh, vengo a compartirles como mi experiencia de vivir aquí en California, donde las rentas son exclusivamente caras, donde mi salario no me alcanza como para ahorrar para esta temporada de trabajo que para, porque yo ocupo dos cheques cuando lo poco que gano para mi renta, más o menos, a veces más. El otro es para medio comer y el otro es para, no me alcanza, no me ajusta para pagar la aseguranza, un pago de carro que aunque lo saqué de segunda, tercera mano, no lo sé, es 2005, este teléfono, entonces um, ahorita simplemente yo no he pagado mi renta, no tengo forma de que mis hermanos me puedan prestar porque están en la misma situación que yo, este es algo extremadamente feo, preocupante, donde la gente no puede salir tranquilo con esas preocupaciones tal vez donde he visto personas, sobre todo hombres solos, que se les renta un espacio, una cama en 560, donde no tienen derecho a, co a cocinar, a usar el microondas, a usar el refrigerador, tienen que estar afuera. He visto amigas que tienen en renta un cuarto donde piden personas solas, no animales, no niños y no uso de cocina. Entonces, todos estamos viviendo una situación desesperada porque la gente que tiene casas o que tiene algún lugar de renta es exclusivamente abusiva. Y los que no tenemos, pues estamos uh, como en préstamos, como for, por familiares, a lo mejor hasta en préstamos de rédito, que otra persona le renta cobrándole un 10%, donde uno ya no lo puede pagar. Entonces, uh, también si hacen algo, que espero que sí, para las rentas, para los precios, pues tampoco no calificamos para nada. Si yo voy y aplico para un bajos ingresos, no, no califico. Este, personas solas tampoco califican, entonces no sé. Gracias. No, no, yeah. okay. Gracias. Vale. Hello, my name is Maria Caballero. I'm from District 1 here in Salinas, and I come to share with you the experience of living in California. Um, here we don't earn enough to be able to save for the off season. I have two checks and most of it goes to the rent and a little bit to eat. I can't afford insurance. My car, I bought it third, fourth hand, but I really can't even afford to pay that or my phone. Um, there's no place to rent. My, my, I can't really um, ask my siblings to loan me money because they don't have any money to loan me. So it's, it's very worrisome. And um, some rooms are for rent, like for a, a, a man only. They rent a bed for $560 a month, but they don't have the right to cook. They don't have a right to use the refrigerator and they don't uh, allow children or pets, no chicken, no kitchen use, and people that have homes for rent are very abusive. Um, we can't get loans. There's also this system where it's Reddit, like it's, for example, another person rents the house for you, and then they charge you 10% additional for the favor of renting the house in your name. And I really, I mean, low income, I don't qualify. Um, you know, single peer people don't qualify, so it's a worrisome situation. Thank you. Welcome. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Um, my name is Mary Morcioli, and I live in District 4. And I see the problem really bad because it happened to me. I can't pay sometimes. So then I, I have a hard time because once I pay my rent, right after that I have no money. And then I have to buy my pills or whatever and I start asking, borrowing money or selling something to buy my pills. And so then it's very hard for us seniors to get um, along, you know, in life, it's it's getting worse. So I, it happened to me and I, I really um, am very worried because why if I end up in the hospital, I don't want to be in the hospital. I, I do need help and um, the rent is very high. So we do need some kind of rent control or 
if you ask, I, I need an extension, maybe tomorrow I pay. No, you gotta pay. You gotta pay as soon as you can. And you have to do it. You, there's no buts about it. So that's, I understand because they need their money and all that, but we need to have some kind of control because we're gonna end up out in the streets and I don't know what I'm gonna do out there. Um, so please help us, you know, thank you. Thank you. Hi, welcome. Buenas tardes a todos. Mi nombre es Nidia Soto. Estoy aquí porque, bueno, estoy trabajando con Building Healthy Community. Eh, el grupo aquí, quiero agradecerle, Pecindarios Prósperos. Están haciendo un alcance con la comunidad y hemos encontrado experiencias completamente inhumanas de familias viviendo en la calle, viviendo en sus carros, uh, yendo sus hijos a la escuela de sus carros. Es, es algo inhumano completamente que está sufriendo nuestra comunidad por el simple hecho de no tener para pagar una habitación, de no pa poder pagar un, una, un apartamento. Encontré una familia donde su, sus hijos pequeños de cuatro y cinco años, mitad de su pelo se está cayendo porque han escuchado a sus papás contando centavo por centavo para completar su renta. Y eso pasó en el Distrito 1, en el Parque Las Casitas. Y está pasando en cualquier distrito de la ciudad de Salinas. Familias enteras trabajando dos trabajos, descuidan sus hijos. Y ahí es donde empiezan problemas con los jóvenes. Pero entonces las familias tienen que escoger, los padres tienen que escoger en cuidar los hijos o tenerles un techo. Y es muy difícil. Esa es una decisión muy difícil. Y los hijos dicen, so, ¿para qué seguimos estudiando si estamos mirando la necesidad tan grande de nuestros padres por tenernos un techo? So, siguen en el círculo de la familia de irse al campo, trabajar por temporadas, ahorran en la temporada, no les alcanza en el invierno para pagar su, su renta, para pagar una habitación. Estamos sufriendo una necesidad muy grande, como la familia aquí este, de Ernesto, tuvieron que quitar prestado para que su, su hija y su esposa y él tengan un techo. Entonces, les pedimos, por favor, que traigan a, a un voto, a discusión, este, un control de rentas aquí en Salinas. Muchas gracias por escucharnos. Thank you. Gracias. Hello, my name is Nidia Soto, and I'm here because I work with BHC, and I also uh, am part of Thriving Neighborhoods. So we're trying to do community outreach, and I have heard stories that are not humane. It is terrible to hear families that live on the street in their cars, children go from their cars to school, and this community is really suffering. They can't afford to rent an apartment or even a room. Um, I know about a family that he, they have a four and a five-year-old child. Their hair is literally falling out because they hear their parents every uh, day counting the pennies to be able to pay rent, and that is in District 1 and Parque Las Casitas. Uh, it's hard. Families have to work two jobs to be able to make ends meet, and they can't even take care of the children, and that's another issue. When they can't take care of their children, they are ending up in problems too. So it's hard because a family has to decide. Either you have a roof over your head and your family, or you take care of your children. So a lot of children are seeing the difficulty and the struggles our family are going through. So they're thinking, why should I study? Why don't I just go to the field, work with my parents, and help them make money? And that way they can um, save some money for the winter season. Um, I see a lot of families suffering, like Ernesto. They had to decide between having, uh, they had to take off a loan just to get a roof over her, his wife and daughter's head. So I please ask you to put to vote the rent control here in Salinas. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, welcome. Yeah. Buenas tardes. Mi nombre es María Yesenia Chávez. Disculpe, escribí lo que iba a decir. Este, el año pasado a nuestra familia nos subieron 660 de renta. Vivo en el Distrito 4. Este, les pido, por favor, nos ayuden. 
ya que muchas familias estamos pasando de mucha frustración por incremento de renta y por todo está caro y no nos alcanza el dinero para todas nuestras necesidades. Y moverse de estado no es posible, ya que mi esposo tiene 18 años en su trabajo y mis hijas aquí nacieron y están estudiando. Bueno, han de decir que ya aumentaron el salario, pero cuando aumentan el salario, con ello viene aumento en todas las necesidades que tenemos y en vez de ayudarnos, nos perjudican. Les pido también que vean esos programas de vivienda que son para ayudar a personas emigrantes. Y resulta que si no tienen un número de seguro, no califica para la ayuda, nada más sus hijos. Que si en un futuro arregla, arreglan, en, entonces sí califican y no aceptan permisos de trabajo. Y uno esperanzado que eso pase, que haya una amistía y no pasa. Los hijos crecen, empiezan a trabajar y como viven con uno, sus ingresos nos afectan. Y como somos de familias unidas, no los sacamos de la casa. Al contrario, nos apoyamos, ya que solo, solo no podemos salir adelante. Hay familias que sí hacen y sacan a sus hijos cumpliendo 18 años y eso es muy feo. Um, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Maria Yesenia Chavez and I'm here to tell you that my family suffered a rent increase last year for $660. Uh, we live in District 4, so I ask please to help us. Our families are feeling very frustrating, frustrated. Um, rent is so high, everything is so expensive. We really don't make enough to cover all our needs, and moving out of state is not an option. My husband has been working in his job for 18 years. My daughters were born here, and they're studying here. Um, salaries, yes, you can say salaries went up. But when that happens, everything else goes up. All our basic needs are, are more expensive, so we're in the same situation. And that really affects us. What we need is a program, a program that helps immigrant families to get a home. But the problem is that if we don't have a social security number, we're not eligible, just our children. So in the future, we may be eligible. Work permits are not allowed. So we need a program. We need something to help immigrants' families. Our children grow. They start working. But we're a united fa our families are very united. So we don't kick our kids out when they turn 18. Other people do, but we don't think that's, that's nice. So we keep our children in our homes. Thank you. Hi, welcome. No, <laughs> uh, good afternoon. I heard we have an interim police chief. Congratulations, we should all stomp our feet and clap our hands. The housing conversation is really interesting because you have low income people that don't have homes and at the same time our taxing structure will force people with homes out of homes. So people will buy a home but their real challenge is not their mortgage, it's the amount of taxes that the city charges for them to keep their home. And so when we look at housing, we need to look at people that don't have homes and the need to sustain your middle class, right? And not to tax them out of the resources that they have. Um, I represent the Montevilla community. We have issues with the soccer community coming in and um, destroying aspects of our park. We met with uh, Mr. Rojas who's the president of the organization. And he basically said that the city has cut down parks at Constitution and there's other city locations where they could play soccer, but the city is not allowing them to play soccer. Um, we will work with him to try to monitor the park because if his folks are coming in, maybe he can teach them to respect the park. At the same time, if we were to have some people come in from code enforcement, 
to try to make sure that the rules were followed. We brought the bylaws with us and the rules with us. Um, we can share them with you and Mr. Rojas. Um, there is a need to allow his organization access to the city resources that are available so that way he doesn't have to come into the community and destroy the playgrounds and the play yards of the schools. And again, we pay the taxes, the taxes that threaten us to have to leave our homes, right? If we don't pay taxes, we leave our homes, but at the same time, we're not getting the services that we're paying for. Thank you. Hi, welcome. Good afternoon, Mayor, City Council members, Mr. Pia, and the rest of the uh, guests. My name is Antonio Rago. I'm with the Montebello. Uh, we have a little issue, as you just heard. Uh, we've been ignored for the past four years. Uh, this time is really out of control because uh, supposedly Parks and Recreation receded the turf, and then they allowed for these games to take place Saturday and Sunday from nine o'clock in the morning till six o'clock in the afternoon. This created a parking situation, no supervision from the city, no, no, no help from the police, no help from court enforcement, and people do as they please all around the, our community uh, with, uh, you name it, two bathrooms for three or 400 people during the day, and uh, we call for help. As of today, we haven't received one call. We're asking for your help, City Council Barrera, and the rest of the City Council people, and uh, Mr. Pia, and Parks and Recreation. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, welcome. Hi, good evening, uh, Jose Guerra, Montebella community. Um, I've been talking to my colleagues here, and we did have a meeting with Mr. Abbasi with the Alsa School District, and also Mr. Rojas with the Soccer League, and we're trying to get it all put together. Uh, we're not going to get any help from the school. They said no. It's a liability for them to go through the front, hire a janitor. It's going to cost some. Um, Mr. Rago, what was it five hundred eighty dollars a day? Five hundred dollars, five hundred eighty dollars a day plus times three. Excuse me, to actually have that happen. They have the resources there at the school. They're the one allowing it. They should be responsible for it. They're not, they're not taking charge for it. But now since the city has opened the gate on the other side, it becomes a city issue now. Now it's a city issue. So is the city gonna come in and put portables? Is the city gonna come in and, and have people patrol or, or, or make sure they have enough resources? Mr. Rojas can't do that by himself, not by himself. There's too many people. There's no way he can watch all those people in one shot. It's impossible. So are we gonna do something about it, council members, uh, mayor? I mean, we need to do something. Mr. Pia, Ms. Lindquist, are we gonna do something for the community? Because you guys don't live there, we do. So we see it all. And if we don't see it, it gets sent to us by phone. So a lot of my reports, I'm not there. It gets sent to me. And I do them on the Sicilian City Connect, and people say, oh, you might misinform this and that. I don't do that. I inform what people give me, people that are there. I'm not there. So if someone wants to say that, they need to actually get their facts right. So if they're going to say we're misinforming, they should come and take a look themselves and get the right information. Well, thank you, guys. Have a good evening and good luck. Hopefully, you guys can do something for us. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, welcome. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, City Council, Madam Mayor, uh, just wanted to take a moment to recognize uh, our colleague, uh, Nidia, and our team, Vecindarios Prosperos, Thriving Neighborhoods, in making sure that we're moving forward, we're at least keeping the conversation going around rent control. Um, as we all know that the city has formally already acknowledged uh, that this is gonna be an issue, something to approach within this year. Hopefully, as soon as possible, um, you know, just, just the stories that keep coming up, that, that need, that urgency, is, it feels as if it's just growing more and more each day. So really appreciating your time, all y'all's energy and effort, and making sure that our residents are being heard. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Hi, welcome. 
Good afternoon, Honorable Mayor, City Council members, staff. Uh, my name is Jorge Rojas. Um, I'm a father of uh, kids in the districts, and I'm also a veteran and community advocate. So the conversation that has been unfolding is in regards to the Montevea Park. We had a meeting already, and we were trying to find an amicable solution, and we're getting to that point. But like I expressed, uh, uh, the school district can only do so much. We need the help and support of the city. And that's why we're trying to brainstorm ideas as how we can uh, solve this solution. And I have a meeting with um, Kristen Lundquist this Friday, and we're going to discuss about the, what options we have. Uh, our organization, we are Monterey County Soccer Club. We have uh, over 300 teams. So if you multiply that times 20, so we're looking at uh, hitting almost 8,000 membership uh, pretty soon, and the uh, organization keeps growing. But we can only do so much. We play year-round. In the winter, the Constitution Complex is closed. Uh, Road Bank is not allowing us to share the facility, which I've expressed that, that if we could use it every other weekend, that way our kids could use it and then they have the adult program that's using it, uh, use it every other weekend. But that idea has not been entertained. So I went out to uh, Pajaro Valley Unified School District and we were able to do an MOU. That MOU will consist of having our kids play over there, but I don't see why we have to travel all the way to Watson Mill to have our kids play over there. Another thing is we have the high school all-star game, which is the uh, largest um, event in the county, and we have the high school seniors play in this event. We had a container at Constitution Complex, but we were told we had to remove it. We have it right now in Watson Mill, so we have our partnerships uh, with uh, KSBW, Estrella TV, and all these organizations, and we have to go drive over Watson Mill to get our equipment so we can have a high school officer game, which happens the second weekend of March. So we're not here to point fingers to anyone. We just want a cooperation, work together, school district, the community, and city. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we'll go ahead and close public comment and go over to Zoom. Does any member on Zoom or any member of the public on Zoom wish to comment on items not on today's agenda? We do have one raised hand. And um, it looks like uh, uh, Dwight is uh, the member that has a uh, hand raised. So go ahead and unmute yourself. You have two minutes. All right. Hi, can you hear me? I can, thank you. All right. So I'm a member of the Montebello community too, but I have other issues that I would like to bring up. Um, the, the city approved uh, two stop signs to mitigate the speeding on Scomberg uh, Parkway. And and if the police department is down 30 officers, how will they sign, how will they stop infractions being, how will the infractions be enforced if we don't have the police officers to um, write tickets. Uh, would not be better to have speed bumps when they police themselves. Um, I also have a suggestion regarding recruiting police officers. I did a Google search for how many students were at were enrolled at Salinas Unified School District in Hartnell College. There are approximately 15,000 students at in the high schools and 17,000 at Hartnell. Would it be advantageous to recruit from these schools? The city could offer incentives like tuition assistance three years for three years of service for the police department. This could be funded from the 30 officer salary budget that we are already down. Um, and that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Any other member on Zoom wish to comment on items not on today's agenda? Seeing none, we'll go ahead and close public comment. Thank you very much for coming. And we will go on to our first item for consideration. 24-003, the City Council Committees and Regional Board Appointments. Uh, the report, we have had uh, extensive discussion about it. And um, in the last council meeting, uh, most of the appointments were made with the exception of uh, the appointment that I made for myself to Monterey One Water, as well as the request for Council Member Rocha to be added to the Rules of Decorum and City Charter Committee. Um, council Member Rocha, my comments were um, centered mostly around um, that there had been no discussion and I was uncomfortable present, uh, uh, making an appointment without you present at a, at a council meeting. There was some discussion um, and a request from council that Council Member Rocha and I meet separately to discuss those two items. Uh, but the city attorney uh, cautioned me that we may be um, dancing around a Brown Act issue. So, um, and I think, 
Council Member Rocha is aware of that, and certainly uh, neither he nor I engaged in that conversation so that we can have it here in the public today. So I think I've covered everything. Uh, with that, um, I don't think there's anything further uh, to present, um, so I will go to Council Member questions on the topic. I'll start to my left, Council Member McShane. Yeah, um, Mayor, if you could just restate for us um, your position on, let's just, M1 Water, I think, was the one issue up for grabs. <clears throat> and maybe just speak to what that, what that board entails. And I, I just would love to hear your point on, I think the debate centered around why Rocha should be the appointee versus you, per se. Um, yeah. Sure, so, um, so I sat on Monterey One Water uh, this past year. Prior to that, uh, Council Member Crow Means was the appointee, um, and I believe prior to that was uh, Mayor Gunter, and then prior to that was Councilwoman um, De La Rosa. Um, M1W is a sewer treatment provider for Monterey County. Um, essentially, the um, the agency reintroduces water into the environment through regulated ocean discharge, producing non-potable recycled water and primarily the purification of potable recycled water. Um, we have a lot of different uh, issues that we're currently dealing with centered around the city of Salinas. Um, there has been a, uh, we have a short-term agreement in place that this council is aware of. We are working on a long-term agreement um, additionally, the council requested when they when M1W came to this board, um, the council requested that there be an opt-out option as M1W was voting to put um, their bills on the county tax roll. And also, um, I have broached the subject of a weighted vote um, because the city of Salinas is. Um, Participation in M1W accounts for over 50% of its revenue, but we only have approximately 26% of the vote. So those have been the things I've worked on in the past year. Real quickly, do you think there's grounds for you to be removed uh, based on attendance, behavior, votes that may not be in the interest of Salinas residents, uh, any of that? I mean, can you think of anything? <laughs> So, uh, so I appreciate the softball. Thank I, I just, you. I, I, but you know, I don't need you to stand up for yourself. I'm just kind of curious. As no, to I mean, I, I would tell you my um, attendance is near perfect. It that I have voted in alignment with how this council has asked me to vote on these respective issues, and I feel like one as the mayor of Salinas, and two as a good representative of the community that we all represent. I think I've done a solid job. Okay, I'll wait for comment. Thank you. That's Thank all. Thank you. Councilmember Rocha, questions? Okay, Councilmember Sandoval. Okay, Councilmember Gonzalez. Councilmember Barrera. No questions. Councilmember Sornio. No questions. Okay, I'll go out to the public. Does any member of the public wish to comment on this item? Hi, welcome. Hi, um, I'm Eloise Shem, and I'm a Salinas resident. So um, I just think that the mayor should could, should continue to be on the Monterey One uh, board, and um, I don't see why there should be any question, but um, maybe, maybe Councilman Rocha could explain to us why he thinks that he should be on the board rather than the mayor. Thank you. Hi, welcome. Yeah, one of the things that Councilman Rocha brought up in a uh, meeting was the discrimination of women in politics. Um, I think that that's what it was talked about, discrimination against women, how women in politics should get paid more, how we need to be able to support and empower women. I'm right with you, brother. Empower the mayor, let her lead, keep her in her position, make sure that we are consistently doing the best job that we can because we don't want to break things up, we don't want to make things more complicated. Follow, and follow a woman, right, to ensure that the concerns that you addressed earlier are not a part of the council in which you sit. 
Hi, welcome. Hello again. Um, just wanted to communicate my support for Council Member Rocha's uh, potential uh, position on that commission. Um, for the sake of the fact that we, you know, we're Salinas Valley. This is, uh, you know, we're part of the global food chain. Um, the fact that water, the issue of water, uh, that water is, water is life. And being the fact that this city is located on a water shed, uh, there is just so much more uh, education around water that um, I feel and believe that, you know, Council Member Rocha will, will do his best to make sure that that, that is on the forefront. Um, an, environmental, an environmental lens, a critical environmental lens, um, is something that, it's something that we should be able to foster and ensure that that voice will be on that commission. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, welcome. Hi, I'm Karen Araujo, a lifelong resident of Salinas. I realized I've lived within a mile and a half my entire life. I realized that the other day. Um, I think touting the benefits of having one viewpoint on a, in an appointed seat doesn't have to be against the person who's there. I got really excited when I realized there might be a choice here. I didn't know that was still up in the air. I think Anthony Rocha uh, would be a wonderful appointment to that. Um, the lens of forward thinking, sustainability, who he brings by being the person he is and the demographics and future of Salinas and, and what that is. I like, I like what I see, the meeting between those two things. Um, I trust his leadership. I know that he is respected throughout the region and has excellent skills at negotiation. His word is trusted. Um, and I think you do a wonderful job. And I, and I understand that you're on multiple committees and commissions, so it doesn't, there's plenty of work to do. Uh, thank you for the good work you all do. And I think Anthony would be wonderful on that as a council member, council member Rocha. Uh, Monterey One, the water issue in general, as we all know, is the most important thing going on for the long, long term in our region. I'd like to have his voice in, and vote there, carrying out the will of the council, the people of Salinas, but also bringing that cooperative, sustainable, forward-thinking, innovative, creative lens that he carries. I'm all for women in leadership. I think he'd be great in that. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, welcome. Hello, Kevin D, and I'm a customer of Monterey One Water. And I did have to say something. Probably most people watching this in the city of Salinas have no idea what the dynamics are behind all this. I have to deal with this all the time, of course. Uh, I'll make a point here. There are a lot of people on the Monterey Peninsula who they want the people of Salinas to come and work for them during the day and then go back home to Salinas at night and they use water as their little weapon to keep anything from being built there. And even the people there who say, oh no, I like housing, you know what? They always find a way. And I'm predicting right now that the day where the state stops talking about that, lifting the cease and desist order, all of a sudden people will say, well maybe that cease and desist order isn't so bad after all, you know, keep our water supply. I have to say that uh, the mirror on that Monterey One Water is aware that, you know, uh, economic growth and building housing and things like that require the supply of more water from a variety of diverse sources. And she is opposed by people who don't want growth and don't want people from Salinas working uh, in hospitality and then actually living there. And uh, for this reason, I, I, I think if you're going to do a change on this, why don't you just talk openly about what the issue is? It's about water supply and housing on the Monterey Peninsula. Maybe it's time for you to talk about that. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, welcome. Good afternoon, Mayor, entire city council. Uh, correction, I sat on that board for many, many years. The mayor, 
Mayor Gunter never attended the meetings. So I think the mayor should be the one on the board. That board got really heated at times, and I would walk in there and they wouldn't speak to me from the peninsula. Why? Because the water. Yes, water, water is precious. <laughs> they need to solve their water problems. They haven't solved them yet, and it has to be someone with a lot of experience, like the experience you have, and you need to keep supporting our city for our water rights, okay? So maybe a negotiation can be done between both of you. You, he could be your alternate, because most of the time my, my alternate, you know, sometimes would attend, very few times, but I attend at most of the meetings. So maybe you can make him your alternate. Thank you. Thank you. All right, seeing no one else for public comment. Oh, hi, welcome. All right, um, hello, council. Um, I just wanted to comment and say how um, I think it's really imperative um, to have people who have like a fresh perspective and carry a critical lens. I'm considering the fact that Salinas used to be under um, an inland sea, um, like the Central Valley under Lake Corkman. Um, and early on in the 1900s, um, we were on flooded, but we saw various issues throughout, such as DDT, which posed a grand threat to like our eagle and condor population, but no one has really justified or regulated um, a lot of the ag use that we've seen. Um, across California, we see how humans consume 10 to 20% of the water supply, but 90 um, to 80% is used uh, for ag. Um, considering sustainability, maybe that's something that should be addressed and solutions should be uh, posed. So just, again, looping back around how um, finding these um, solutions is imperative to this um, Salinas area and um, California drought um, as a whole. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Seeing none, I'll go ahead and close public comment, go over to Zoom. Any member on Zoom, any member of the public on Zoom wish to comment on this item? If so, please use the raise hand function. Okay, seeing none, I will go ahead and close public comment. I'll come back to council members for comment and action. I'll start to my left. Council Member McShane. Yeah, I think this has become political and it's unfortunate. Uh, Mayor, I trust you on that board. I think you've done a good job. You've proven yourself to do a good job. Um, I appreciate Council Member Rocha's interest. Um, you know, I, I think the whole appointments process was done really well this year. If you look through the packet, you'll see there's ranking, uh, attendance, uh, there's robust uh, investigation as to compensation, the number of boards and committees you're on. Gosh, I would just make the argument that Council Member Rocha is on far more regional boards, certainly when you take into alternates, than anybody else. Uh, you know, and, and even committees. I, I appreciate the enthusiasm and the dedication, but you know, equity as it, as it relates to the entire board is something important. I don't know how many boards off the top of my head that the mayor represents us on, but I think it's two. Um, and, and that may be good for you, mayor. Um, but I, I would just, uh, I would move the uh, recommendation of the staff for the appointment uh, as it stands. I'll second. Thank you. Uh, moving on, Council Member Rocha, comments. Thank you. Uh, first, I want to clarify something that was said at the last council meeting. Council Member Sandoval had said that he had asked me if it, whether or not I was okay with serving on the Charter Review Committee. Uh, I think you may have misspoken. Uh, there was a conversation about making the request of the council meeting to establish a Charter Review Committee, but we never talked about me serving on that committee. So I wanted to clarify that. Um, as it relates to this particular appointment, I want to be very clear and upfront in saying that, Mayor, I respect you. As our mayor, I respect you as a person. I appreciate the opportunity to be able to work with you. And uh, I apologize to you if, there, if this process has felt personal to you. That was not my intention whatsoever. Um, I'm 
putting my name forward to serve on this board for uh, really two main reasons, my experience on water issues and also my proven ability to break down very complex policy questions, create consensus, and deliver results on the boards that I'm on. I currently represent the city on the Groundwater Sustainability Agency board, and I have for the past three years. I have three years of water experience under my belt. I'm going on my sixth year in elected office. In addition to my experience as a water board member, I also recently completed a very uh, extensive water education program. I was one of 16 applicants that was chosen throughout the state of California to participate in the water education for Latino leaders program. I traveled up and down the state of California touring the various very serious water issues facing our state. Uh, from the Polanco parks in um, Indian, in Indio, California, that essentially areas where there is not clear uh, water supply that is not contaminated. Uh, and so people are essentially trying to um, filter their water system but do not have adequate infrastructure to do so in a manner that alerts them when their uh, water supply has been contaminated with nitrate or other uh, sources. I traveled to Sacramento to view the Delta. I traveled uh, all over the state of California to, to study these issues, not only to study the policy around it, but to gain understanding of how to create an equity policy framework to put forward legislation and accomplish work. In addition to that experience, um, I currently serve on the Salinas Valley Solid Waste Authority Board of Directors. And I've served on that board since 2020 when I was first appointed. I was appointed by the mayor at the time because we had a very, very serious task before this council of negotiating the move out of Sun Street. I was appointed on that board. We worked through a very, very, very complicated time. It was very heated. Um, and since that, in 2023, the mayor and Councilmember Comings were no longer on that board. Councilmember Sandoval and Gonzalez joined that board. I was made board president that year, not because necessarily it was the desire of the board for me to become board president, but because it was in the bylaws that a city of Salinas representative had to be board president. There was a lot of pushback to my election as board president, but I was elected as board president. In this year of time that I've been board president for the organization, I've worked really hard to reopen those channels of communication build trust, put forward a shared vision, and I'm happy to share with my colleagues um, that despite all the troubles we've had on that board, this um, January, I was re-elected as board president unanimously. And I think that speaks to my leadership and it speaks to my ability to work with <clears throat> members of city councils all across the region and create a shared vision. At a strategic planning session, Patrick Matthews, the general manager of the agency, shared, and Councilmember Sandoval was there, that he really thanked me for creating a collaborative spirit on that board and for making people feel like they're back at home on that agency. That really meant a lot to me, uh, and I'm happy to have been reelected as board president. During my time on this council, I believe I have exemplified an ability to work on very complex issues, work with the public, work with our colleagues, and create consensus and get things passed. One key example of that is the American Rescue Plan discussion that we had in August of 2021. It was a very, very heated discussion. A lot of people had strong views on it, but in working with members on this council, we put together a shared vision of what we wanted to see. I was able to communicate that vision for this council, and I was able to, even though I'm not a math person, figure out all the numbers to make sure it made sense, work with our city attorney to make sure that it was legally defensible and it was adopted. Since then, I think that the American Rescue Plan has been something we've all coalesced around as a source of uh, uh, pride for this city. Um, on the downtown inclusionary housing exemption, that was also a very uh, heated issue. Um, but we were able to work together as a board and we all had very different views on it. But in the end, the downtown in inclusionary housing exemption was repealed with a compromise that we were able to work to together. A compromise that I worked and spearheaded to bring us all together. Um, and lastly, um, I think both of those examples show an ability for me to really engage in deep policy analysis, engage in a collaborative spirit and bring forward um, 
the type of changes that, that we need to see. Um, so it's my existing relationships in the Monterey One Water Board that I believe will be helpful for me. Glenn Church, the current board member, is my alternate vice president on the Salinas Valley Solid Waste Authority. I have served with Alexis Arizola in the Community Human Services Board. I have a deep relationship with Mayor Tyler Williamson from Monterey. Um, that coupled with my three years of uh, water policy experience, nearly six years of elected office experience, I believe have qualified me to be able to serve on this board, represent this council, and advocate for sustainable water solutions that put the needs of our community first. Because ultimately, that water board serves to put the needs of the community first, and everything else is second. We could talk about all these other issues, but really sustainable water solutions has to be at the forefront of all of our discussions. Um, Lastly, there's been a lot of discussion on the amount of regional boards that I serve on. I serve on three regional boards as the primary appointee. I am on three regional boards as an alternate. Uh, I, if any member would like to take any of those three alternates, or if you'd like to take all three of those alternates, please uh, do so. I'd be happy to give them up. If anyone would like to serve on Salinas Valley Solid Waste Authority and go to Gonzalez at uh, 6 p.m. on a Thursday. Please raise your hand and share your interest. Uh, Community Human Services meets on a Thursday at 11 a.m. in San City, and the Groundwater Sustainability Agency meets here at 3.30 on a Thursday. So I've taken on these regional boards, uh, yes, because I have an interest in public policy, but really uh, the amount of boards that I serve on is, is a testament to the fact that I am not married, I do not have children, and I have a flexible schedule, so I want to make sure I could pick up uh, some uh, of the work from my colleagues here as you all have more, um, I think, demanding personal schedules than I do. So I have the flexibility to serve in these capacities, and I'm, and I'm happy to help the council through that. So if there's any interest in for me to give up any of those seats, I'd be more than happy to do so. Mayor, if you would like to serve in any of those seats, I also want to extend that uh, opportunity for you to express that, and uh, I would gladly give any of those seats up to you as well. Um, I'd like Monterey One Water pretty please. Eh, well, I'm not on there yet. <laughs> uh, but, uh, if, you know, um, so, so just wanted to share that. But once again, I want to reiterate my respect for you, Mayor, and, and want to make sure that I highlight the reason for this. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate the dialogue. Uh, Councilmember Sandoval, comments? Yeah, uh, Councilmember Rocha addressed something that I wanted to address as well, which is I, I did miss, misspeak the last council meeting. It was my impression that he had a desire to serve on the charter committee, but like he said, reflecting on that, it was just um, that he wanted to bring some changes to the charter. Councilmember McShane and I work very well together on the decorum committee, so um, I'd like to continue serving in that capacity. Um, you know, I echo some of the public comments made about uh, Anthony's leadership, uh, his ability to collaborate. Um, and, um, you know, with that, I'd like to make a substitute motion that uh, Councilmember McShane and I continue on the rules of decorum and charter revision committee, uh, not including uh, Councilmember Rocha, and appoint Anthony Rocha to the Monterey One water seat. Second. Okay, we have a substitute motion uh, to appoint Anthony Rocha to M1W and to maintain the current uh, rules of decorum city charter committee at council member McShane and council member Sandoval motion substitute motion made by council member Sandoval seconded by council member Gonzalez will go on for comments thank you uh, council member Gonzalez thank you madam mayor um, you know we've certainly had robust conversation on this and I'd like to appreciate <coughs> the council members and their candor on this while it can be a tricky issue I recall all the way to last year when we were making the appointments there was a conversation around having uh, Mayor Craig serve up until now the remainder of that term and have Councilmember Rocha be an alternate. So to me, I don't frankly see why this needs to be a divisive conversation. I see this as follow through as a conversation that we had started all the way uh, back to last year. I know that both Mayor Craig and Councilmember Rocha would serve to the best of their abilities and have uh, the interest of the council and by extension the community of course in those leadership positions. To me, having Anthony serve on the board ensures that we have equitable representation, that we continue to have different voices and different perspectives in these regional boards. Um, while I understand that 
each of these council members have different strengths and different uh, forms of experience. I've served on several regional boards with Council Member Rocha and can attest to his leadership ability. I believe that his equity and environmental justice focused uh, paradigm will very much serve him in a seat like this and would like to see him put the skill sets that he gained during the fellowship that he served on last year for water working through uh, and up and down California. I really would like to see him put those to the test in this seat and hope that whatever uh, this council decides on that we look beyond uh, personal or political agendas and reaffirm the fact that this is a team and a unit and that either council member Rocha or Mayor Craig would do very well in this position. Thank you. Thank you. Council member Barrera. You know, there's no doubt we are in a political arena, but at the same time, putting the public first, as we say. Uh, I, I believe whatever this council decides, it should be for the better good of the people of Salinas. We just heard from some of the folks in Montevilla, uh, Mr. Ravalo just mentioned he feels ignored. So instead of arguing that point, let's find out why he feels ignored. Let's look for solutions. And you know up here, we're, we're all passionate, we all have agendas, including the public. But when it comes down to it, once there's a uh, nomination and there's a majority vote, we respect that whether we agree with it or not, and we move on and we work for the good of, of the city. I think it's very important. Um, you, you know, I, I've learned that instead of trying to explain myself to try to convince somebody of my goodwill, I've learned that just to keep my mouth shut and allow my actions to show that. But my colleagues, I have respect for all of you, and I think whatever the direction we go, we continue working together for the good of the people that are in front of us. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Osornio? Uh, yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. And um, I just wanted to thank the board members that I was able to speak with um, throughout the week. I was able to reach a majority of that board and really have great conversations about what, in their opinion, makes a good board member. Um, the, 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 the thing that we kept on um, speaking about was collaboration. And as somebody that serves on, one of, on these regional boards as well, um, it, yes, we always have to go in there and making sure that we're representing Salinas to our best of our abilities, but these are regional boards. These boards are, are comprised of different jurisdictions that all have one common goal. Um, I have worked with um, with both the mayor and council member Rocha um, and and I've have to say that just throughout the years and collabor collaborating and compromising and really being creative in how we're going to address solutions um, I really had to I, I really had to think about what experiences I have with with uh, both the mayor and and council member Rocha and and while we work really well together on a numerous uh, topics. Um, it was just very evident after speaking with those board members of, of the person that I was going to be supporting today. Um, and so I just really wanted to thank them for being able to give me insight um, into some of the topics that they speak about, um, what are things that are important to them as being able to serve on this regional board with the person that we uh, appoint to that board, um, and, and also both of my colleagues, because I know you um, you guys have been very collaborative in the past, and so um, I, um, I look forward to, to um, taking this vote today, and I just wanted to say thank you for both of your guys' service. Thank you. Um, final comments on my end. You know, interestingly, I had a lot of people weigh in and say, you just got to fight and tell them all the reasons why you deserve to be on the board. And, and I feel like I have done that. I report out every two weeks on our, our, the appointments that I go to. Um, Monterey One Water certainly is a regional appointment that is important. It is important to the water supply of the Salinas Valley. Um, I had to do some heavy lifting before even getting on that board. Um, in the context of being the mayor and having a breakdown of communication between the city and Monterey One Water. And I spoke in public comment with uh, former council member Christy Cromines 
um, who was kind of trying to unpack some of the, the complexities of receiving a grant and whatnot. So I knew that I had an uphill battle on day one, uh, coming in and formulating relationships with uh, that board at M1W. I can uh, acknowledge, and certainly I know um, Councilmember Rocha has established himself in the last 16 years as somebody who works uh, very well on regional boards. And it's why I have repeatedly given you increased responsibility year after year um, to include supporting the decision to make you chair at the Salinas Valley Solid Waste Authority. And a reminder to this council that last year, and up until last year, I worked very collaboratively with all of you to work around your work schedules, to work around all of the complexities like, hey, I'm not really interested in transportation. I don't want to be on the transportation committee. And trying to find the common ground for what you got elected to do so that you can serve with passion and serve with drive and serve with good representation to this city. I also removed myself off of two massive boards, TAMSI and the Salinas Valley Solid Waste Authority, in an effort to be collaborative and in an effort to have good faith and compromise with this, with this council so that council could be more equitable and have increased responsibility with regional boards. Removing me off of Monterey One Water gives me one regional appointment. The Coalition of Homeless Service Providers has in their bylaws that the mayor, at, and that's a non-negotiable, the mayor is a required appointee. So it leaves me with the Monterey County Convention and Visitors Bureau. It strips me of all of my regional appointments. Just to be clear. I am one of two women on that board of 10, and removing me leaves one woman left on that board. I'm the second female in 150 years to have been elected as mayor. We are more than 50% of the population. So if we're talking about equity and we're talking about equitability, I fall into both of those categories. I feel like I have been very communicative with this board. I understand the drive and the decisions of this board. And I feel like my votes over the last year as the appointed represent Re appointed representative have been reflective of this board, of this council. I mentioned uh, the things I've been working on, um, the things that I've come up to a point of decision making, the opt out option with the Monterey One Water bill on the county tax roll. We're working on a long term agreement that's going to take probably long past. I don't know, I don't want to make any declarative statements, but we've had quite a bit of turnover, so it's been delayed. Um, the weighted vote, I finally feel like after 40 years, we're having an open and very, very forward discussion about bringing forward the weighted vote. I got told it would come forward in January. It got bumped to the next month. I just will say this, like, I feel like, this council has asked me to be collaborative, has asked me to be compromising, and I feel like I have done that. I feel like I have done that. And it is incredibly frustrating to me that as I have given the increased responsibility at the request of these council members, that it leaves me with essentially no representation. And I'm the mayor of the city. I'll also just acknowledge that the ratifying of the appointments is causing divisiveness and argument with this council. I think it worked out much better through the city attorney when I spoke to each council member about their respective appointments and we worked it out without having a big giant public open discussion about who's better and who's less qualified and who's more qualified. The comments I made last year that Councilmember Gonzalez referenced, I said, put me on the board for a year, and if you don't like how I vote, take me off. And I think I've been pretty doggone straight up with this board, and also in how I voted to continue serving. So 
I don't, I've, I've filibustered long enough. I will also just say I'm not married, I don't have kids, and I have a flexible schedule too, <laughs> right? Ron Stefani, Kent Hybino, Mayor Scott Donaldson, Mayor Marianne Carbone all serve on that board. I have excellent relationships with them. And arguably, I have increased my relationships significantly with the others, too. Do we disagree? Absolutely. Do you have a formidable person who doesn't sit and not say anything and let the meeting go by? Absolutely not. I absolutely speak up and fight and talk and argue and negotiate and compromise as best I can as a representative for this board and for the residents of Salinas on Monterey One Water. To say I'm gonna sit back and like, let a really, really controversial topic like water just sail on by is frankly insulting. Every one of us are elected to speak our voice and to um, do what we can for our residents and for the body as a whole through Monterey One Water. With that, my, I'll, Mayor, I'll close my if, comments. If I, if I may say one thing, um, when I said earlier that I'm on those boards, perhaps because I may have less personal obligations, I want to make it very clear I did not mean that as that's why I should get the appointment. And I want to deeply apologize to you if that's the way it came up. That was not at all my intent. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, call for the substitute motion uh, vote, please. Substitute, I'll call for the substitute motion. I just want to clarify or confirm that Sandoval will remain as the alternate on Monterey One Water. Uh, that was what I had proposed. Thank you. Council Member Barrera? Yes. Council Member Gonzalez? Yes. Council Member McShane? No. Council Member Osorno? Yes. Council Member Rocha? Yes. Council Member Sandoval? Yes. Mayor Craig? No. Motion passes. Thank you. M Mayor Thank Craig? Thank you for the robust discussion. We're going to move on. Okay. Thank you. All right, we will go on to the City Council consent agenda. There are nine items on consent. Would any member? Oh, no, nope, I'm just kidding. I'm not at consent yet. We're at 24028, fiscal year 2023-2024, mid-year budget review and supplemental appropriation requests. And we have Selena Andrews, our Assistant Finance Director, here to give the report. Good afternoon, Mayor and City Council. I am Selena Andrews, Assistant Finance Director. It's a pleasure to be with, here with you today. The item before you is the fiscal year 22-23 mid-year budget review and supplemental appropriation requests. Uh, staff recommends that City Council take the following actions, and that's to receive the fiscal year 23-24 mid-year budget performance review and authorize budget adjustments identified in the review. In fiscal year 2022, City Council identified strategic priorities. These priorities are the basis of the budget development. While not identified here, City Council included within these high-level categories uh, other priorities, projects, and programs. We will begin with the review of the City's general fund revenues, which include general fund, Measure E, and Measure G. This graph illustrates the City Council adopted budget revenues within the general funds. As noted, sales tax is the largest revenue source for the city, followed by property tax and other revenues. This table shows the general funds revenues for five years through December 31st, and percentages of those revenues received through the second quarter. So this includes the first and the second quarter. We also have actuals that came in for the last four years. So fiscal year 1920 through 2223. Staff anticipates exceeding the revenue estimate by about 1 million. The main driver for this variance is an anticipated increase in sales and use tax receipts collected by the city. Okay. 
Moving on to the general fund expenditure review, which also includes uh, the general fund, Measure E and Measure G. Here this graph illustrates the City Council adopted expenditures within the general funds. This table represents citywide expenditures, again for five years through December 31st with percentages uh, of the uh, expended amounts for the second, through the second quarter. Actual ex and actual expenditures for the last four years. While most departments identified a need for additional appropriations, they're able to use salary savings and therefore not, not, we are not requesting or recommending additional appropriation to some of those budgets. Overall, overall the estimated increase in expenditures are projected to be offset by an anticipated increase in revenue. And just to note here, the common theme across all the departments is that there's high level of vacancies. Uh, which uh, is resulted in the salary savings that we're able to accommodate for those additional expenditures. Identified here are the, um, are the specific uh, supplemental appropriations that are being requested by staff, specifically in the city attorney's office, 150,000 for additional uh, counsel. Uh, non-departmental uh, uh, contingency budget for 150,000. Transfer out of the general fund for the rental registry program, 143,000. And transfer out of the general fund for the storm sewer, 60,000. Um, within Measure G, there was an identified need for additional appropriation of about a million. I'm sorry, 596,200. Total suppl supplemental appropriations um, are a little over a million. Um, there is, we are recommending that the revenue budget also be increased to offset these additional appropriations. And that's gonna be the general fund, 503,000, and the Measure G transaction and use tax, 596,000. Additional recommended appropriations to other funds are for the airport, 138,000, and that is, uh, that is uh, going to be covered by, I'm sorry, the general, the surplus fund balance. My apologies. <laughs> um, and the storm water here is also identified $60,000. Thank you, and with that, staff is available for questions. Excellent, thank you. I'll start to my left. Councilmember McShane, questions? Yeah, <clears throat> thank you, Selena. Great job. Um, can you speak with greater detail to the 143,000 that's needed for the rental registry program? Uh, what's going on there? Why are we short? Okay, actually there is uh, Oh, great. Hi, Lisa. Uh, community Development Director, Lisa Britton, can speak <laughs> to that. Thank you. There you go. Councilmember McShane, the primary reason why additional funds are needed is that revenue collection um, has been slow. So we have only collected approximately, we're estimating between now and the end of the year, $45,000. And so for us to continue funding the program implementation, which includes staffing, as well as the contract services that are needed to do the outreach and provide the fair housing uh, resource assistance, uh, we need this uh, gap of 143 to be filled. Thanks. Do you anticipate that that 143 will be recovered, will come back, and would go back into the general fund at some point? When in future catch up? years, in future years, we're still in. This is year one. We're not even a full year. You know, this was set up in. You know, approved in April. It's day one was July one. So we're just over six months in. So ideally, yes, this would be a fully funded program, and there could even be some surplus depending on really the pulse of how many uh, units we have and compliance with the program. Thank you, Lisa. That's You're all. welcome. 
Is that it, Councilmember McShane? Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Questions, Councilmember Rocha. Yeah, my question is to fund these uh, changes to the budget. Are they all coming from the general fund surplus, or is it through increased revenue that was not previously accounted for, or where is this additional money going to come from? Thank you for the question, Councilmember Rocha. Uh, this is an offset with ex expenditures, I'm sorry, with additional uh, revenues that we anticipate receiving. And, and that is general fund revenue? General fund, that is and correct. General fund and Measure G. Understood. Uh, that's my only question. Thank you. Yeah. Councilmember Gonzalez, Councilmember Barrera, questions? Yes, thank you. Uh, Ms. Andrews, thank you for your report. You know, uh, I've always been uh, a strong uh, advocate for our prevention programs, library and community services. How do you think, and I'm looking at the numbers here, um, how are we doing? I know a lot of times we're talking about service for seniors, for youth. Um, how are we doing, uh, and I see the numbers here, but any idea um, with this salary and what we're proposing, are, are we doing a good job out there in our community that, that you see that it's beneficial? So I can, I can speak to the numbers here, and um, it looks like we did increase the budget in 22-23, and this is for the library and community services. Um, so we did increase the budget. Um, actuals came in in the prior year at about 11.8 million, and so the budget was increased to 15 million. So there was additional capacity built in there, which is why you're seeing the uh, second quarter total expenditures at 36%. So it's increased? Mm -hmm. well, in, in addition to that, as you'll see that the expenditures are also increasing 5.4 million, which is higher than the prior year. Yes, thank you. And as far as the police department, um, with the services, I know we've been talking a lot about community policing. Um, share a little bit about the numbers there. Um, I would like the public to hear that the city council, if this is true, that we are supporting uh, the police department with dollars. So I'd earlier I'd shown a chart that identifies what uh, was budgeted for all the departments. And you'll notice in that, um, in that chart, there was, there, the police department is has the highest budget, the largest budget. Um, so I can't speak to the numbers in that we are budgeting for additional expenditures for all the things that we need to do, but specific pro programs that would need to come from the chief. And, and Ms. Andrews, my last question, and with that budget, um, the police department does have money to be able to hire uh, more officers. There is budget, yes. Yes, it's budgeted. We build in salary savings as part of the budget process, but there is budget currently. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Council Member Rocha, questions? Sorry, you're a smile. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> I'm taking well, my well, right and my left. There's a resemblance. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Yeah, it's, about ten, it's about 10 years younger, but thank you <laughs> for the compliment. Uh, no questions, Madam Mayor. Okay, going out to the public, do members of the public wish to comment on this item? Kevin Dayton representing the Salinas Valley Chamber of Commerce. Some of you may have seen the two-page letter with the seven questions regarding the residential rental registry program and its $143,000 deficit. Thank you, Councilman McShane, for at least acknowledging that that's out there. I can't really say anything more about this other than I think you've read it and you know everything in that letter is true. And uh, at some point, perhaps, you'll want to take a look at that program again because right now it seems to be failing. It's controversial and it's failing. Thank you. Anyone else on this topic? Okay, we'll go to Zoom. Uh, any member of the public on Zoom wish to comment on this item? All right, I have two people. Uh, Adam Pinteritz, you are uh, unmuted and you have two minutes. 
Good evening, Mayor and City Council members. My name is Adam Pinteritz. I sat on the Technical Advisory Committee that drafted or helped work on this ordinance. And, and we put in a year's worth of meetings to, to find a middle ground and compromises so that all the stakeholders involved could work with it. And one of the big elements of that compromise and of all those meetings uh, was that the budget was consistently set at 400,000 and that this program was ultimately supposed to be self-sufficient. So it's, it's pretty upsetting to see that that's not the case, not even a year later. Particularly so, in my, in my mind, considering that we were also told that there would be an online uh, portal where property or where, where the owners of residential rental properties um, could create an account and register their property in order to be in compliance and update it, right? So that they could continue to keep that information and that data as uh, useful as possible. Yes. We don't have such a portal. There's no, no means of creating an account or updating it. It's it was initially launched with a PDF form, which, you know, that takes most people maybe an afternoon to create uh, you know, one staff person, um, half a day's work. Uh, or the alternative online was to fill out a Google form, which, you know, those are free and you can set them up in a few minutes. Um, the Google form has since been replaced with an open form, which is basically just the same thing, except it's not free. So it's that, that's also already costing additional money. Uh, so so I'm, I'm just expressing on behalf of over 1,200 local realtors and the thousands of clients in the city of Salinas uh, that they represent and serve, um, just a level of disappointment in, in terms of what we're getting for what we're paying for. So I would ask that the council please uh, put this item on a future agenda, pull it from this agenda today, and put it on a future agenda to examine what's not working, why is this additional money needed, and, and where is it going to come from, and, 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 and you know, how, how is this all going to pencil out, uh, and, and is this a healthy program in the long run, is it working? I think we need a, a separate agenda item and a separate meeting to really examine that question Thank thoroughly you. and do due diligence. Thank you. All right. Uh, we'll go on. Uh, Amy Salmena. You are unmuted and you have two minutes. Good evening, Madam Mayor and City Council. I wanted to just go ahead and, and comment. Um, I also was a part of that TAC meeting um, with several stakeholders and um, the Housing Authority and many people on both sides. And I feel like this was a failed attempt and I have made it very public about um, trying to make this work. This is not something that's just gonna happen overnight. And as a person who represents a tenant in every sing single district in the city, um, this is not helping our tenants. This is in no way um, a compromise. And the monies that were spent on the Google Forms, it cost me more money to go ahead and implement and put these things together for my property owners than it does for the city. We are supposed to, like Adam said, have this um, uh, online portal that was supposed to make it easy and it's supposed to be user friendly and it's supposed to be so that we're helping out the city and the fire and the police department and it's self supposed to be self-sustaining. All of the information that we have is inaccurate. I couldn't agree with Kevin Dayton anymore with the letter and what is needed, I feel, so that we can make an educated decision on how we should move forward if this should move forward. So if the city would please consider on tabling this, moving this to a different agenda item and a different day, I would really appreciate that. Thank you, that is it. Thank you. Uh, seeing no one else on Zoom, we'll go ahead and close public comment, come back to council for comments and action. I'll start to my left, Councilmember McShane. Yeah, Selena, great job. Uh, you know, I know you're relatively new and um, there's a lot in here and um, the budget is our most resp important responsibility. Um, I just want to echo some of the comments on the rental registry. Um, I've received a lot of negative feedback um, and I think everybody just needs to hear that from a practical standpoint to to be able to register, you have to take several appointments. Um, one might be with finance in a different building to pay uh, or say at the permit center to pull a permit and get that filed. Um, the ability to do these things online don't exist right now. So it, it's inconvenient and that's probably a reason why you know there's a deficit. Um, and, I, and I think it's re worth reiterating that you know, as we heard tonight, there's a lot 
There's a lot of folks struggling when it comes to housing. So adding additional steps and listening to some of the folks that are in the poll position when it comes to administering housing or owning housing and hearing that it's, it's not working um, or that it's an added burden or expense um, you know, should be some indicator. So uh, you know, I, I definitely would encourage staff to look at this closer. Um, it's something I did not support. And um, you know, maybe, there's, maybe there's some bucket of gold at the other end of the rainbow with this process. Um, I remember at the time that uh, there were some benefits to it and it would be easy uh, as implemented and it, and it really hasn't turned out that way. Um, it adds bureaucracy and cost um, and I would argue even confusion to the rental process, holding up potentially units um, and housing stock. Um, so all reason to engage some of the folks that uh, called in or were here today. Thank you. Councilmember Rocha, final comments. Thank you. Um, I, of course, support any changes that would allow for the registry process to be easier. And I would encourage us to explore those options. Um, I would really push against the notion that this program is even at a deficit because the program hasn't been in operation for a full year. It's only been in operation for eight months. It started in July 1st. So we have not had the opportunity to fully assess uh, how this program is doing from a financial standpoint. And also as part of the compromise when we brought this program forward, we said that we would not be heavy handed with the landlords in terms of forcing everyone right away to get on board. So that leniency, that was part of the compromise, is probably contributing to this. So as we work towards creating a program that works, I think people just need to let it have a chance to do what it's supposed to do. It hasn't even had one full year yet. So uh, to our city staff, I wanna let you know that I appreciate you. I appreciate your hard work. This is not an easy lift. We're the first city in the county to do this. So you're pioneers in that respect. And um, please know that I as a council member see your efforts and I support this program. Um, and I'm committed to doing whatever it takes to make it work. Thank you. Council member Sandoval. Yeah, I, I also echo Councilmember Roach's support for our staff. This is a developing program. If we were to judge um, whether or not we have to add additional funds to projects and make that determination, uh, or make that a determination whether it's failing or successful, we wouldn't build rec centers, we wouldn't build a lot of things. Um, that's just a reality. Um, this is in its infancy, I think uh, Mr. Pinterest said it best. Ultimately, the goal is to be self-sufficient. But seven months out, I'm sorry, it's not gonna work that quickly. Unfortunately, government is slow. Um, I know we'd like it to move a lot faster as well. Um, is, is it true, as uh, city manager, um, that this program is, might be holding up units or rental stock, or how do you foresee that uh, having that effect? I didn't want to break protocol here, but thank oh, you, Councilmember yeah, Sandoval. Um, it's I I have no way of knowing whether or not rentals are being stalled because a landlord or a tenant, uh, mainly the landlord in this case, has not completed a process to register their rental. I have no way of knowing that. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I, and, and I did get a chance to read the, the chamber's letter from Mr. Dayton. I think every resident or organization has a right to receive some answers in a timely manner. I, I would like the, uh, to give our director uh, an opportunity to respond to some of them if it's so appropriate, but I, I think that the, the strategic plan of the city council gave the direction to move in this as well as the TAC committee, so I'm happy to move the item for approval. Second. Motion made by Councilmember Sandoval, seconded by Councilmember Rocha. We'll go on to Councilmember Gonzalez for a final comment. Thank you, Mayor Craig. Um, would just like to echo the remarks of Councilmember Sandoval and Councilmember Rocha. Um, you know, when something has been enacted for such a short period of time, I think I would exercise caution in making a general judgment of that program. The rental registry program is the first of its kind in the county, and as we know, housing is such an incredibly touchy issue. So many residents came tonight to talk about accessibility, equitable access to housing, and I believe that this really is one of the most effective measures that we can use. 
However, that being said, I really would encourage us to be a little bit more creative when it comes to making sure that this program does re does evolve and is responsive to the needs of residents. Um, other than that, I really just want to thank our city staff for putting this together. The budget is one of, if not the most important things that we take on as council members. So I'd like to thank you for your dedication on this. Thank you. Uh, council member Pereira, final comments? I'm ready to vote. Thank okay, you. council member Sornio, final comments? Thank you for the update uh, and, and glad to continue to support the uh, rental registry. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, all right, uh, we have a motion and a second on um, the item. Call for the vote, please. Council member Barrera? Yes. Council member Gonzalez? Yes. Council member McShane? Yeah. Council member Osorno? Yes. Council member Rocha? Yes. Council member Sandoval? Yes. Mayor Craig? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. All right, now we get to do the consent agenda. I've been looking forward to this all night. Uh, nine items on consent. Would any member of the council like to pull an item for separate vote or discussion? And then I'll go out to the public. I'll start to my left. Council member McShane? Yeah, 24044. Um, and then that's all, just, just that. Thank you. Council member Rocha. Yes, 24031. Councilmember Sandoval? 031, 044, and 049. To my right, Councilmember Gonzalez. Councilmember Barrera? That's 031 and 044. Councilmember Sornio? 031 and 049. Okay, and I may reserve for comment on 049. Uh, we'll go out to the public. Any member of the public wish to pull an item that is on consent? So go ahead. Yep. Oh, look at you coming up. Thank you. Z 049. 049. Okay. Anyone else? All right, I'll go I to think, Zoom. I think we have one more person. Uh, 049. Uh, all right, I'll go to Zoom. Any member of the public on Zoom wish to comment on any items on uh, consent? Seeing none, I'll go ahead and close public comment. I'll seek a motion to approve the remaining items. So moved. Second. Okay, motion made by Councilmember Sandoval, seconded by Councilmember Gonzalez. Um, on, uh, we'll call for the vote on 062, 057, 036, 040, 043, and 048. Council, vote, please. Council Member Barrera? Yes. Council Member Gonzalez? Yes. Council Member McShane? Yeah. Council Member Osorno? Yes. Council Member Rocha? Yes. Council Member Sandoval? Yes. Mayor Craig? Yes. Motion passes. All right, 031. I will start to my left. Council Member Rocha, you pulled this item. Yeah, I'm not sure. If anyone from Public Works is here, would that be you, Mr. Jacobs? I have a question. Looking for staff. All right. Um, I, I have a question. Just as I was looking at the um, map, there is a base bid one and base bid two. Um, is there a different timeline for either of those? No, the the, the, pro, the project is all one project, so okay. the timeline is the same. It will once the contractor is awarded the contract, he determines which area he's going to do and what timing it's going to happen in. But we give him a specific number of days to do the work in, and he has to fit that work within his time frame. Is it done by base bids, or what is the reason to delineate between base bid one and base bid two? We, we do the base bid um, because that is how we deter we did a cost estimate, and the base bid is what our cost estimate would be fit the um, amount of money available. We put alternatives in there in case the bids come in lower than our estimate, and we can add those alternates in. And what is before us is adding in the alternates as well. So all, all the ones listed, they're all going to get done. I'm trying to stall for Adriana to get here. Oh, uh, <laughs> um, I, I, be, I believe the low bid included all the alternate bids. Is that correct? Adriana's yes. here. Okay. Um, with that being said, I, I want to. Did you want to add anything, Adriana? I'm not. 
sure what the question is. Yeah, that is a funny Sorry. All the get awarded with this. Correct. Okay, thank you. Uh, I just want to say thank you to the both of you for your flexibility on this. Thank you to our city administration for, for including the Delancey uh, Drive neighborhood. So thank you so much for that. Those are all of my comments and questions. I'll move the item for approval. Okay. Second. Motion made by Councilmember Rocha, seconded by Councilmember Sandoval. We'll go on for comment. Councilmember Sandoval, you also pulled this item. Yeah, as you know, the cost of repairing our sidewalks continues to go up, so I'm very thankful for this large um, section of Veranda, uh, not Veranda, I'm sorry, uh, Van Buren um, that's getting done uh, in District 5. I know that um, some of our public work staff has been on emails with a resident from District 5 about the prioritization or where um, the, the work starts. And I, and I heard you say a little earlier that's really up to the contractor, but I will make a plug for District 5. We, in our last project, we still have uh, some pending work that's delayed even more because of weather. Um, so, you know, maybe we can start a district five this time. Mm. Uh, I'm not sure how that decision gets made, but um, I know that uh, that would be helpful for some of our residents. Um, are we able to add more money to change orders in case um, maybe a side street or something can be done, or is this, you know, the end? Um, so we've already added a contingency, which uh, does give us a little bit of a cushion for us to do change orders for any additional work that we might need. Yeah. So yes. Yeah, thank you. I, and the, the only thing I was considering asking the council is if we, we could increase that, because you know it's a lot of work for you all to bring these projects forward, and it's easier and give you more flexibility if you have more of a contingency than waiting until next year, whatever the next timeline is. So I don't know if the council would consider adding some budget, uh, an additional allocation for that, but I mean, even $100,000 uh, just to be able to do that extra work in the city of Salinas would, would be uh, appreciated. Okay. Uh, Council Member Pereira, you also pulled this item? Uh, yes, first of all, plug for District 5. But Ms. Robles, uh, once, and this is exciting work, you know, it's a long time coming, but I, I, I'm looking at Mr. Peterson. I know uh, at one time they did a, you did a lot of work on Cherokee. You know, and sometimes good work is, is uh, getting done. How do we guarantee that the work is getting done well? You know, after the project is over, you paid all, everybody. But then all of a sudden we find out that things are going wrong with the work. How do we guarantee that we are doing a, a very good job? So we do inspect all the work that gets done. We do have our inspectors out there um, checking the performance of the contractor. Also, the contractors do have a one-year, basically, guarantee of the work. Um, and that's one year following acceptance by the council. Thank you. Okay, Councilmember Osorio, you also pulled this item. Yeah, I just wanted to say that uh, very supportive of, uh, of the work that's getting done. I have, um, and my question would be, is this, the, uh, I believe this is the same contractor that did Marielle, which is a couple of streets, uh, Marielle Drive, is that JJ's as well, JJR? So this is the contractor that did the phase one project. Phase one project. Correct. Okay. Yeah, then that's gonna be Marielle. Okay, um, yeah, I just, I've been seeing uh, those guys getting to, to work on, on a lot of these projects and um, very supportive and, and obviously supportive um, to see the work that they're about to do. So thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, call for the vote on 031, please. Councilmember Barrera? Yes. Councilmember Gonzalez? Yes. Councilmember McShane? Yep. Councilmember Osorno? Yes. Councilmember Rocha? Yes. Councilmember Sandoval? Yes. Mayor Craig? Yes. Motion passes. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, all right, ID 044, um, the amendment to the Monterey Street parking garage operations contract. I'll start to my left. Councilmember McShane, you pulled this item. Yeah, David, um, I feel like we had already appropriated funds for <clears throat> the improvements. Uh, there was like cameras and there's been security concerns about the garage. Do you have any update on that? Okay, there, there is, the security issues are there, but there's no money appropriated um, to improve the camera systems there. Um, 
the, the city manager has has uh, directed us to move forward with security cameras and improving those, and he was going to use some contingency funds to get that done. So we are currently working on a contract to actually install better cameras in Monterey Street parking garage. Okay, so so we didn't we didn't fund that. No, we did not. Okay, because, again, it would have to come out of the. the Downtown parking district, district which right. is underwater right now. Okay, so still underwater. Correct. And your prognosis for the fund long term is it? Again, um, COVID hit us hard. Uh, yeah. We were going to be in the in the black. COVID hit. Nobody was parking there. Um, we're still trying to recover from that issue. Um, we're going to have to go and actually start looking at the parking district again and see mm. how we actually get in the black. So, okay. It, it's still subsidized and will be for the foreseeable future. Correct. Okay. Um, thank you. That's all. Okay. Uh, Council Member Sandoval, you pulled this item. Yeah. Do we know what the annual revenue that we're receiving uh, from the parking garage compared to what it's costing us yeah, is? A, we, we do board. have that information. I don't have it uh, available to me right now, but I can definitely forward it to you. Okay. Yes. Uh, Steve had it. It's about 280, 280. 284. Um, and so there, it runs a deficit uh, every year. And part of that, just to be up front so we're not hiding the ball, sure. is that we have exorbitantly low parking rates in this community, and we need to re address that. Can Man. you put a number on exorbitant? <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you think of it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. my gosh. 125. Yeah, right. Oh, well, thank you. Um, uh, I appreciate that. Um, I'm just, I'm just concerned, you know, I, I read over the contract and, and you know, we're, we're going to be putting the bill or subsidizing that for, a, well, what appears to be a long time. I think it might be a good time to reanalyze, you know, maybe do an RFP or look at some other options other than just kind of saying, well, we're going to be out 200000 every year. Um, so um, that's something I'd like our city manager to consider for the future. Um, how about revenues that we lose? Because I couldn't find anything in the contract when either equipment is down or staff is not present. Does the city have any um, way to recoup those funds or are we just out? If Because they're in charge of the maintenance, is that correct? Like to their kiosk and equipment? Yeah, there, there, there's a person there and there's a kiosk there. Um, it's older equipment and we're talking to Laz now about upgrading that equipment so it actually works on a on a, a more frequent basis. I guess it goes down regularly right now. So the equipment is aging in the Monterey, Monterey Street garage. We really need to look at upgrading the equipment. Uh, but again, um, it's going to have to be a loan from the, the general fund to be able to put money in there to upgrade everything. And um, we also lost our, our traffic engineer who was overseeing right. a lot of uh, right. the, the parking garage stuff. So a lot of the stuff that he was working on in the background has, has stalled to this point. Um, but there has been some talk about automizing um, the parking structure so we don't have to have a person there. Upgrading the cameras is a step in that direction. Um, but again, it's going to take a, a pretty substantial sum of money to actually upgrade all the equipment and make it um, so it works properly. Are we, so the equipment to um, charge our residents is our equipment? I, I didn't understand the question. So is the equipment, the kiosk equipment, is that, does that belong to us? Because you yes, said it we, does. Oh, yeah. it does, okay. The only thing that doesn't is, uh, is a credit card reader, and that's now out of date, so we're working with Laz to, to upgrade that equipment. Okay. Well, yeah, I, I think they have a pretty sweet deal as far as getting reimbursed or increases to um, cover their costs, but we're kind of getting the short end of the stick. Um, I think that we do need to revisit, like Councilmember McShane said, our parking fees, maybe the agreement, um, and definitely we need to have working equipment in order to be able to collect those fees because $200,000 is a quite a big deficit, and that could fund a lot of different things. Um, including sidewalks and public safety. So um, I, I'm not in support of this increase until we take a good look at what we can do to save our residents money and not continue subsidizing that. Council Member Barrera, you also pulled this item. Yes, Mr. Jacobson, uh, thinking about what the city managers just said, addressing parking rates, 
the cameras have not been working there for quite some time, as I understand. It's dangerous. They, they do work. They're just not a very good quality. And there are some cameras that don't work. But they, most of the cameras do work. It's just the quality and accessing the video is the problem. Yeah. And I think the safety of, I, I mean, the concerns, I, I had this one individual, one person, a business owner, walk me to the, the parking area. Um, and yet it's kind of scary if you don't have good quality cameras, uh, you know, if something does happen, because it, it, it's not a very safe area as well, you know, you, you got to be careful there. But my, my question is, um, any idea with what you know financially, whether we're not making enough money, but if people are relying on good quality service, um, any idea when we would have good camera system? Um, I believe the estimate right now is one hundred and sixty to one hundred eighty thousand dollars for the camera system, mm. and we so we have quotes right now to include the Monterey Street parking garage and uh, the Church Street parking uh, structure to put cameras in them. Yeah, thank you. Okay, council members, I'm seeking action on this item. I'll move the item. Second. Okay, motion made by Council Member McShane, seconded by Council Member uh, Barrera. Call for the vote. Council Member Barrera? Yes. Council Member Gonzalez? Yes. Council Member McShane? Yep. Council Member Osorno? Yes. Council Member Rocha? Yes. Council Member Sandoval? No. Mayor Craig? Yes. Motion passes. Okay, thank you. Uh, last item, uh, ID 049, the Axon Equipment and Services for Police and Community Development Departments. We do have a member of the public, so Council, I'm going to take the member of the public first on this item. Uh, come on up. Okay. Welcome. You have two minutes. Okay, so um, I'm Eloise Shem, and um, I just want to comment that um, I think it's a little bit premature to be purchasing these items uh, because these tasers, body cams, drones, all, all these kinds of things. First of all, I have kind of a, an, a thing about all these things in terms of civil liberties anyway. And I know from the past meetings that the police department has already purchased a lot of this kind of cameras and license plate readers and spot shots and all of these other things. But I think it's premature because we haven't had any kind of data from the police department about the kinds of crimes in the last year. It's been over a year like, you know, the number of break-ins, people bipping or whatever you call it, smash and grabs, and the, and the more serious crimes like murders, rapes, kidnapping, all of that kind of thing. We, we haven't really had any annual report about that. And I think we should have that before you make a decision to buy any more of this kind of equipment. And the other thing I want to say, if I have a minute, is um, I think the the body cams for the community development, mm -hmm. it sort of criminalizes civil things by combining the, the uh, community development. I don't think they should have body cams myself. If, if something is bad enough, they can the police. Thank you. All right. Uh, we have members on council that have also pulled this item. Council Member Sandoval, mm -hmm. you pulled it. Yeah, I, I had a, a member of the PCAC reach out to me yesterday and ask, uh, ask me to ask a couple questions. Um, so um, I had to email the response, but I, I didn't get a chance to get that. So um, uh, one of the questions was, what, what has led code enforcement to move towards body cams? Mm -hmm. 
Thank you, Council Member um, Sandoval. So I do want to clarify that um, code enforcement currently is using body cams. This item is to upgrade uh, to a higher version of, of body cams. And the intent of using body cams is one, to ensure the safety of the offer, officer, uh, ensure accountability of the resident as well as the officer, and to uh, document um, customer service and to work towards excellent customer service and in interaction. So those are the primary reasons for body cams. Okay, and then um, another question was, um, uh, what, you know, what will be the protocol for code enforcement officers to turn on their uh, body cams as far as inside of residents' homes? Um, you know, one of the questions he had was, is it an invasion of privacy for residents? You know, they, they're having code enforcement visit them and then all of a sudden everything in their home is being recorded. It's a little different than I think a PD issue. Yes, understand that concern. So my understanding is that current practices, the um, during any uh, interaction, when uh, there's a field visit uh, in an inspection, the camera is turned on again for safety, accountability, and um, customer service. Um, I defer to the city attorney as is to if there's any violation. It is evident. It is not done in secret. Um, and again, it's for the protection of both parties. And just, I just want to add, council member, that this is just for the purchase of this equipment, and we are in the process of developing a policy for the code enforcement officers that will address those issues in specific, similar to what the PD, the police department, excuse me, has in place now. Okay, yeah, that, that was going to be my next question, is, is what will be their policy? Because it sounds like they're currently wearing them now, so I hope we're moving quickly on that policy just because there is... A uh, there is some concerns uh, about protocol. Maybe um, will it will it be the same policy for accessing, um, you know, body cam footage? If a resident has a concern, will they have access to that? So I hope all that is considered as we move forward in the policy. Oh, and then uh, the last question, sir, it was, um, it's my understanding uh, the resident or the PCAC member also asked um, or mentioned that although the body cam was presented to the PCAC, was a discussion about it being for code enforcement officers also included in that discussion? So my understanding was in speaking to the code enforcement manager that there was a presentation approximately two years ago regarding the use of body cams by code enforcement, but not with this item, not for the upgrade. Okay, maybe we can send that to those members as a refresher. I know we've had some uh, new members onto that. Uh, PCAC, thank you. Okay, Councilmember Sornio, you also pulled this item? Uh, yes, I, I also did uh, get some some similarity in the questions. Um, and and um, I'm wondering, um, can code enforcement automatically do a search without being dispatched? So I, I, the way I understood uh, this individual's question is, um, if code enforcement is driving around, they see something, can they just stop at somebody and perform a search? I wouldn't call it a search. They oh, can do an inquiry. Inquiry. So if they see a violation, they will stop. And if there's an individual there that they can speak to, they will engage in conversation. If you look on the code enforcement vehicles, our approach is compliance through education. So we are not approaching this as a punitive, I got you. Um, this is education for the health and safety of our community. Thank you. Uh, um, and then the the other um, the other question was, um, can you can you speak a little bit to when um, when a code enforcement officer were to um, go to a to a to a home? Um, is there anything required of, for an inquiry? Uh, is there anything um, that that homeowner would need to be shown to be able to allow somebody into their home to do an inspection? I don't believe there's the same process as a warrant. Uh, this isn't necessarily a search, but there would be notices of violation that would be sent uh, in advance. In most cases, there would be a, an attempt to schedule 
um, an actual inspection. And we wouldn't be, if there was a complaint, um, wouldn't necessarily just be showing up at the door. Okay, so so just to be clear, it's probably going to be a, le a letter in the mail, and then followed up with an, uh, an attempt to make. An there would be notice of violation, okay. correct? Okay, and then um, and then if that doesn't go through, is is there a not, is there somebody can just go to this individual's house, or is, can you speak a little bit to that process? And just because this is um, this was a question that this person really wanted. To Go ahead. Let me try this one, Council Thank Member. If um, the property owner doesn't give consent, then we have the opportunity to get an inspection warrant from the court. So it's not as if the person says no and they can just go into the house without prior authorization. Thank, thank you. Thank you. That's, that's very clear. Um, and then lastly, the last question was going to be, um, the, um, is there, um, how can somebody access this? Um, is this public record? So would there, if I had an inspection that was done at my house, can my neighbor go and ask for that, for copies of that inspection? Council member, not all of the information is public record. Some of it's protected. Um, so it depends on the situation and the particular request. Okay. Thank, thank you for the clarification. Appreciate it. No further questions. Okay. Um, I will uh, go ahead and waive my comment. Um, I do need action on this item. To approve. Second. Motion made by Councilmember Pereira, seconded by Councilmember Sandoval. Call for the vote. Councilmember Barrera? Yes. Councilmember Gonzalez? Yes. Councilmember McShane? Yep. Councilmember Osorno? Yes. Councilmember Rocha? Yes. Councilmember Sandoval? Yes. Mayor Craig? Yes. Motion passes. Excellent. Thank you. We'll go on to Councilmember reports, appointments, and future agenda items. Um, I will start to my left, Councilmember McShane. Sure, thank you, Mayor. I had a terrific conversation with the leadership behind Big Sur Land Trust today. Uh, oh, man, next month they break ground on the neighborhood park that's just a gift of that organization to our residents. Uh, very excited about that and, you know, just want to thank the city manager for working with their leadership and the city attorney to see to it that... Uh, the entire project comes to fruition. Um, just want to give a lot of thanks to Public Works. Tons of storm damage in the last week yep. or so. Uh, terrific responsiveness. Uh, I just want to highlight a few. Um, certainly one constituent that had concerns associated with San Fernando Drive, um, tree issues. Um, also, uh, 119 East San Luis, in a matter of three weeks, a dangerous sidewalk situation was patched and remedied. Um, that woman's elderly. Uh, there had been trips and falls. And, um, and then Sanborn, Turvin, and Work, uh, a pedestrian, bicyclist sort of hazard um, that a constituent reported to our friend Eric there in the audience. Uh, this one bicyclist was really concerned. So additional signs went up for no turn on red, and uh, I think lives have been saved in that instance. Uh, great article I can't wait to share with uh, my colleagues uh, on a Chinese delegation that came to town. Uh, Boy, that was terrific. Um, these were folks in technology and food tech, ag tech. Um, there was a robust tour, set of tours that I helped put together, worked with the chamber, the business council, and Jim Pia did terrific. So that was really neat, the first of its kind that I know of. And then uh, had the opportunity to tour Notre Dame High School uh, and inspire the young ladies. The mayor was there. You did a terrific job. The amount of photos and the... I mean, you were, you were a real celebrity, and I thought you did terrific to inspire women in leadership. And, and on the heels of that, there was a mayor's prayer breakfast, um, and that was wonderful. 250 folks, uh, Cantor Margaret Bruner from Temple Bethel, alongside uh, Pastor Anthony Davis from Mount Nebo Baptist Church, uh, Pastor Todd Anderson, and Father Ron Green from Sacred Heart. All just terrific stuff. Um, happy to appoint Aurelio Salzar to Measure G Oversight Committee. Um, also want to just acknowledge Tony Barrera for his help in the illegal dumping issue at the corner of Monterey and Market. Uh, that persists. Um, Sal Jimenez is a private property owner at that point. Working closely with the city manager, uh, it's a challenge. Um, and how we overcome that, I'm not sure. And rumor has it, Councilmember Osornio, there will be a helicopter egg drop at the Rodeo Grounds. 
Uh, I saw that, and I think a connection's been made. Um, this could be good for youngsters. I think 3,000 is the number they're hoping for. And I've got my deli pack. They're still taking orders right now. I'll leave flyers in the back. This is a, uh, a tradition for corned beef and pastrami sandwiches. Uh, you can al also order additional bunt cakes. So please uh, do so. It benefits local temple, Bethel. That's all, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Rocha. Thank you. I attended the Salinas Valley Solid Waste Authority Executive Committee meeting uh, this past uh, Thursday, uh, working on being able to bring forward a budget that is supported by the entire board and one that gets us to finally fully funding AB 939 in the budget while also making sure that we're not putting ourselves in a position to where we would lead uh, consumers to believe that the rates that we're establishing are set rates and then down the line increasing them without them realizing it. So we're trying to be as transparent as possible in that process and create a sustainable funding mechanism for the the community outreach that needs to be done for AB 939. Um, I attend the Community Human Services Board meeting, and I'm happy to share with the uh, with the council that the board approved a resolution um, uh, to move forward with the lease at 212 North Main Street, Salinas, California, 93901, for a safe place youth navigation center. Uh, so really excited to be able to bring uh, those critical services to Salinas uh, and making sure that we're focusing on youth homelessness as well as an organization. That's a critical area that we need to make a lot more investments in. Uh, this Thursday, I have a board meeting for the Salinas Valley Groundwater Sustainability Agency, so look forward to reporting out on that board. Um, outside of that, I have nothing else to report. Thank you. Councilmember Sandoval. Well, I am excited because we had a great traffic calming meeting um, in the Camden Area School, and I want to thank, thank Adriana. I don't know if she's here, but all the people uh, in her team, I mean, they did such a great job. Uh, I'm thankful to the community who took the time to come out there and tell us what is important in their community, and I look forward to the plan that's coming to make that community safer. Um, I am excited um, for our upcoming meeting at the Salinas Valley Solid Waste Authority. One of the things that gets me excited about that board, uh, and that's the one that Councilmember Roach is president, is that our board has made a commitment to find the best and cheapest rates that we could offer. I mean, that is the goal. And, and what agency's goal is to give the best rates possible. It's usually about collecting the fees, but I also wanna remind people that Johnston Canyon only charges $18 for a truckload of trash, when locally here in Salinas, it's $50. So uh, drive a little, save a lot. Um, I couldn't resist. Um, uh, Parking garage, as we heard, we're, we're subsidizing parking, and um, you know, $200,000 is, is no joke. We need to find a way to make sure we're not doing that, because I'd love to fix more sidewalks, put more officers on the street, and find some solutions. So if I can get some support for the future um, to, to either do an analysis of our parking fees or parking garage uh, contract, is there Second. any? Thank you. And um, also, I want to make a plug for the amazing work that the Salinas Juneteenth is doing. Um, they have an upcoming, let's see, um, February 10th uh, this year at Al Gabalan Library from 1 to 3. Uh, you can learn about uh, the Renaissance Man, Father of Black History Month, and local Salinas Black History. So Salinas does have a great history, um, uh, a great black history that people don't know about. So I, I encourage you to uh, visit Dr. Kendra in Asia, uh, February 10th, uh, 1 to 3, at the Al Gabalan Library. And that's it for me. Thank you. Councilmember Gonzalez. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I uh, wanted to thank the residents who came today to speak about housing, um, you know, to share such personal, intimate struggles in a public setting is by no means an easy feat and definitely requires courage. Um, so I wanted to thank them for their candor and for being so open and honest with us. I think that it's safe to say that housing is a complex and evolving issue, definitely not something that is going to be taken care of overnight um, and will require our continued collaboration. And I know that my colleagues on this council and I are happy to continue to work towards solutions that serve our residents. Um, wanted to thank our city staff for their responsiveness in the wake of these storms 
in particular, uh, a special shout out to Miss Sophie Rome and her team, you know, getting uh, information that is accessible, that is bilingual, out on social media, out in email blast. It was great to see that our residents are informed and are therefore all the more ready to prepare when these kinds of emergencies do strike. So thank you for that. Um, and then wanted to invite the public to two upcoming events at the Bread Box. Uh, the first, uh, the Al Sal Center for Fine Arts will be hosting a open house evening from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. this Saturday. And next week on Thursday, also at the Bread Box, uh, there will be the second community budget meeting from 6 to 8 p.m. So we do hope to see you there in attendance. And that'll be it for me, Madam Mayor. Councilmember Pereira. Thank you, Sophie, Sophie. Um, you know, I want to thank Building Healthy Communities. Uh, every week, every time we meet, we have people in front of us that come, please assist us in our housing. And you know, these aren't people looking for handouts. These are hardworking people that get up early in the morning, go to work. And you know what, our agriculture industry, I, I, I keep hearing we have four to eight billion dollar agriculture industry, and it creates jobs. People come to, for because of this industry, but they get poverty wages, and they cannot afford a decent living dwelling. I really appreciate when some of these folks, especially moms with little children, they come before this council and they really believe that we can do something about it. And that's hope. And hopefully there is something that we can do to make it easier for, for people. You know, there was this one woman that came here. She rented for so long uh, and her family got evicted because the apartment dwelling was going to be reconstructed and what have you. Did you know that her and her husband and her children got together and they struggled? They bought a house. But you know what she tells me? Every cent that they get goes to their house to pay the mortgage. But she said, we had to do something about it. My God, that's... That's a wonderful story, but at the same time, all of their money is going towards the mortgage. And I think uh, to building healthy communities, to bring in 600 signatures of people looking for a better place to live, a decent place to live, I think we're, we're moving in the right direction to a system. I, I want to, again, congratulate our assistant police chief, Mr. John Murray. Uh, congratulations. I really appreciate when uh, the mayor and council members attended your function. What, was it yesterday? Yeah. Yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and the city manager and the city attorney were there. And you know what? I really appreciated the team level there. there there's a level of respect. I'm, and I'm being sincere with this. That was nice. Actually, some officers smiled at me. I said, all right. This is Because you usually go in there, man. Nobody smiles. You know, it's... But we like you guys. But again, congratulations. And uh, Mr. City Manager and Mr. Jacobs, wherever you're at, uh, we have a four-way stop sign on Chaparral and Linwood. If you really look at the police reports, we do have a lot of... Uh, uh -oh. A lot of what? A lot of accidents. A lot of accidents. People are just asking, you know those little... The stop signs are there. Let's just go put Christmas lights around them. You know, the blinking lights? The red lights, that's all they're asking for, so people can see the stop sign. So, Mr. Jim Pia, I know you're a man that you can do it. You're like Home Depot. Just do it. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so let, let's get it done. Chaparral, Mr. Mr. Pia, uh, I'm going to do a Steve McShane. You're taking notes. I can see that. Chaparral and Linwood. Let's go to those blinking lights on those stop signs. Thank you. Councilmember Sornio. Thank you, Madam Mayor. And um, yeah, just uh, wanted to, um, um, I know that uh, Council Member Sandoval will likely be in attendance, but uh, tomorrow for the Northridge Mall's uh, reading of the Amor Salinas book would be, uh, so it's gonna be Wednesday, February 7th from ele at 11 a.m. and it'll be in the center of uh, the court by round one. So there'll be an opportunity for folks to go out there um, and do a meet and greet with uh, Ranger. Uh, Sophie, thank you for all of your work uh, on this Amor Salinas. Uh, I know that uh, you know our, our past city manager uh, really um, 
when when we discussed kind of seeing what a more Salinas would morph into, I don't think anybody ever realized what it would be. But it's 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 uh it's someone like you that, and obviously your team as well, because I know you you always point to that. But uh, just thank you for everything that uh, a more Salinas has turned into. Uh, that'll be happening tomorrow uh, at the North of Jamal. And then I wanted to give a huge shout out to the Youth for Change celebration. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, Council Member Rocha, for the invitation and going out there uh, for CCA. Uh, man, there, the, the place was packed with youth that were talking about, um, you know, all of their experiences and just getting engaged in their community. And man, I, uh, I, I think somebody said it earlier today, but you know, at, at, at that age, at, at, you know, when I was 15, 16 years old, I, I wasn't, I wasn't doing <laughs> those types of the things. But, uh, but I, I commend, um, you know, them for, for getting. Uh, <laughs> don't worry about that. Uh, for getting engaged. And again, uh, congratulations uh, to Assistant Chief Murray and for the three other officers that were promoted. Um, and that's all I got. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I want to uh, thank, honor, and appreciate Yolanda Cervantes for her time on uh, PCAC. Uh, Yolanda has accepted a new job with the county and can no longer make the meetings. Um, so therefore, I'll be appointing Maria G. Garcia to PCAC. I know um, I've given them the information to, so I've given her the information to fill out to, um, to be appointed appropriately. Um, I attended the League of California Cities, the Mayors and Council Members Academy, just happened to be in our backyard. So uh, there was a um, couple of really interesting um, uh, seminars that I attended. One was on ethics training. The other one was on social media and being an elected official, which I thought was really interesting in terms of what you can and cannot do. Um, and so just wanted to say uh, very helpful and, and good to see local electeds from all over the state of California here in Monterey County. Um, we, I had uh, dinner with a couple of Watsonville council members I'd never met before and it was great to compare notes. So very much appreciate um, the opportunity there. I attended the C Monterey uh, uh, monthly meeting. Um, they're rolling out new branding for the city of Salinas, so they'll be reaching out to each of us. I ask that you be um, receptive and responsive when they email, call. Um, part of their strategy is really having stronger visibility for Salinas and the Salinas Valley. Um, they've hired bilingual staff and have worked with Suba to get some of the East Salinas businesses signed up for additional marketing through C Monterey, which obviously, with a larger marketing budget, can really benefit some of our small businesses. Um, I had the opportunity to go up to San Jose with uh, Mayor um, uh, Anna Velasquez, Council Member Lisa Berkeley from Marina, and um, Kate Daniels Kurz, who is currently a candidate for supervisor, to see Kamala Harris talking about reproductive uh, rights and freedoms. Um, really a great opportunity to just be in the room with other women who we may have strong disagreements on multiple issues that we deal with throughout the county, but to be uh, in lockstep and like-minded on that topic was really an in, um, inspirational and informational day. Um, uh, I would report out on the Monterey One water meeting, but I think I already did, so I won't. Um, I do want to acknowledge we had a Monterey County Mayor's meeting. I want to thank Assistant Chief Murray, who with 10 minutes notice um, came and gave an informational sort of overview of police services of Salinas because, <coughs> excuse me, the cities take turns every month. There are 12 cities in 12 months. The cities take turns, and it was uh, the city of Salinas's turn to host all 12 city mayors. And since we have City Hall under construction, we use the community room at the police department. And interestingly, a lot of the communities surrounding us are having really robust conversations about redoing their police station. And so um, it was just a moment of honor for um, Assistant Chief Murray to come and sort of talk about the overview of the department, why we call it uh, not the department, but the service of police, right? He's teaching me the language. 
Um, but also, um, they got a tour, and they were doing training in the gun range and, and scenarios. Uh, so really a great opportunity for us to show off um, a new city facility while there are a lot of robust conversations going on in Carmel and Hollister and everywhere else. So um, thank you for that, because I said, hey, I'm in your building. Can you come down? And he um, very graciously did so. So thank you. I also just want to acknowledge the promotion ceremony of Assistant Chief Murray and Commander Gabe Gonzalez and Louis Bravo, who have given years and years of service to this community, grew up in this community, um, and have um, risen through the ranks accordingly. Sergeant Dave Pritt was also uh, promoted, and he grew up in Salinas and went to Salinas High, and so homegrown gentlemen that are taking on leadership roles within our uh, police service. Uh, so with that, um, those are all of my comments, and um, I think we are going to now move on to closed session. We have, excuse me, <coughs> it's a 100-day cough. Um, we have closed session. We have anticipated litigation under California Government Code Section 54956.9D2, 54956.9D1. 54956.9D1 and 54956.9 and 54957B1. Does any member of the public wish to comment on any of these items? Hi, welcome. You have two minutes. He does do the work of yeoman. Um, that, with that, uh, I'll go to Zoom. Does any member on Zoom wish to comment? Council, if we could tone it down, thank you. Uh, no members on Zoom. With that, we'll go ahead and adjourn. Our next meeting is February 20th. Thank you.